Hey everyone, it's thrifting time. But not at this old Goodwill store. This is a location that has been featured in a lot of my thrifting videos and it's recently closed. I've never really seen an empty Goodwill before so this is kind of interesting. Now thankfully it didn't really close, it just moved a mile down the road. So here is the new location. And this is in a much bigger shopping plaza and you can see this is all nice and new and bright. but. There's like a Target and a Ross and a PetSmart in this shopping center, so this Goodwill's probably going to be very busy. Let's take a look over in the media section, and this is something I'm starting to see a lot of is Pirates of the Caribbean movies in the DVD section. It's always interesting to see when uh, Goodwill stores start to have tons of copies of the same movie. Kind of seems to be like a cycle. Now here's a classic though, Secret of Nim. What I find interesting if you notice is all of the DVDs are $1.29 now, so if you're somebody who's in the market for DVDs, they're really cheap at a lot of the Goodwill stores now, and they've got some decent movies here. Oh my god, do you guys remember The Hills on MTV? I don't think any of those people are relevant anymore. They all tried so hard to be famous. Of course, Mark's got to pick up the John Tesh CD. I believe his music was used to contact aliens. That was always the rumor that I heard. Let's take a look and see what they've got over in the video game section. And there's actually some decent games here. It's not all sports titles. Mark's showing me a Yanni CD for some reason. <laughs> Now I noticed they had a copy of NBA Jam for the Nintendo Wii. This is a game that I've actually been on the lookout for. I love NBA Jam and I've heard the Wii version is actually pretty decent. Unfortunately though, no disc. This is starting to become a very common occurrence when I'm out thrifting looking for video games. Of course, Star Wars Math had the disc. Now here's something really cool. This is a little Sony stereo. It's actually a boombox, it just doesn't have the speakers with it, but it's got a cassette player, a graphic equalizer. You can see it's got the uh, speaker connections there. This is a nice little unit. I found some speakers that I saw would hook up to it. They're not the original ones, and I've been on the lookout for like a little cassette stereo for my office, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab this. Now this is interesting. This is not a television, even though that's what it looks like. It's from Singer, and it's a little slide real player, and then it's got a cassette deck there to play an audio cassette along with the slides, and as the uh, name on the top suggests, these were mostly used in educational environments. It's always neat finding old educational things like this from schools. I always love looking in the art section to find weird stuff like this. It says it's a uh, limited edition Dale Earnhardt Jr. clock, I guess. Seeing limited edition crap like this at Goodwill always cracks me up because you know whoever bought this originally paid the more than $12 that this is now. Now here's a second Goodwill store that Mark and I just kind of found in downtown Phoenix while we were out filming other stuff and this one's really interesting looking. This was obviously some sort of old store and I love they have the old Kmart style air vents. It's also one of the smallest Goodwill stores in the Phoenix area I've ever been in. This architectural detail on the wall is interesting too. I'd, I'd love to know what this building was originally. I just haven't had a chance to dig into it yet. Now the first thing we found here was this old Montgomery Ward airline record player. I love the faux wood paneling on that. Let's see if I can get the uh, cover off of it so we can take a closer look. Ooh, it's got a genuine diamond LP stylus. Kind of a neat little turntable. Now this I had to film just because this is probably the crappiest keyboard I've ever seen. It's super light, like feather light. The buttons are just squishy as all hell. When you look at the side you can see really how thin and cheap this thing is. Even the, the cable on it, the USB cable is super thin. This is probably truly the worst keyboard I've ever seen. The media section in this Goodwill store is a lot smaller than the other ones, but there were some interesting things to find. Oh look, here's Hannah Montana for the Nintendo Wii. 
How much you want to make about the disc is in this one? It's interesting though because it's in a black Blockbuster rental case and yep, of course the, the disc is in there. Not a game that I want or need though. Now here's something I don't see very often. These are VCDs or video CDs and when I do find them at Goodwill, oftentimes they're from China. And something tells me that is not officially licensed <laughs> Teletubby merchandise, but here's a closer look at the actual VCDs. This was a technology that really never took off in the United States. It predates DVD, but it did take off in a lot of Asian markets. The video CD format was rampant with piracy, and usually when I do find video CDs at a thrift store, they're usually bootleg copies of big Hollywood films. Let's take a look at what video games they've got. And look, here's a copy of uh, Borderlands for the PS3, a game that I, I don't have, and I just recently picked up a PlayStation 3, but no disc. Damn it. <laughs> now right next to it is a demo CD from an Xbox magazine. And these are kind of from the last, you know, hurrah for video game magazines. You really don't see, you know, mainstream video game magazines anymore. But this is what they were doing towards the end. We're including demo discs like this, and sometimes they're kind of interesting to look at. Now let's move on to our third Goodwill location. And this location actually has quite a few VHS tapes over in the media section. I always enjoy looking at old VHS tapes, and there's actually some decent movies here. Got Father of the Bride. Lawrence of Arabia, look at that. Some Lethal Weapon films. Mrs. Doubtfire. Oh, there's Overboard, that's a great one. But I, I tend not to buy those kind of VHS tapes. I'm really on the lookout for weirder ones. Oh look, here's a game I've been looking for. This is a two game pack for the Xbox. Uh, but of course, no disc because that's one that I'm actually looking for. Holy crap, do you guys remember Beauty and the Beast on TV? That was a weird show. I, I barely remember it. All I really remember is the characters. That's a weird piece of the 80s right there. Speaking of weird pieces of the 80s, here's an old A&E made for TV miniseries. Devices and Desires. That sounds like some very old school A&E schlock right there. Now this was funny. The Bible Code. Twin Towers, Airplanes, oh god, this is going to be awful. I remember hearing about this wackiness in the news. I didn't know there was a second Bible Code book, though. I can't believe somebody paid, like, almost $30 for this thing. And, and when you get into it, this is some this is some crazy nonsense right here. And speaking of nonsense, we've got the trifecta of nonsense here. We've got Children of the Matrix, which is about the government being run by lizard people, and crop circles. Fantastic. Now here's some interesting VHS tapes over in the toy section. I, I kind of remember that McGee character, but I was more interested in this. This is uh, Chip and Dale's Rescue Rangers, and it has a couple of episodes on this tape. The Disney Afternoon was great. Now here is a Dungeons & Dragons starter set, and this looks like a newer one. And uh, I, I have the original one from like the 1970s starter set, but uh, I like the box art and stuff on this one better. But this was pretty neat. Mark actually plays Dungeons & Dragons and has been trying to get me to play, but I just haven't had time with work. But it looks like this uh, starter set is slightly used. You've got the uh, rule book, and then there's a campaign there. And then somebody's character sheets were in here. That's kind of fun to find. Oh, and look, here's their inventory sheet. Looks like they had a potion of healing and 30 crossbow bolts. Now, what the hell is this? The Buttercream Gang? Now, this is the kind of weird VHS stuff I'm talking about. This just sounds cheesy and awful. I, I didn't get it, but it's weird. The Buttercream Gang, that sounds dumb as hell. These, however, were not dumb as hell. I actually really liked these owl bookends. I really like stuff that's made out of stone, and, and these are really cool. I don't, I don't need them, but these are kind of some of the cool little home decor pieces you can find sometimes at Goodwill. And on the way out, I spotted both the Epic Mickey games for the Wii, and I don't have the second one, so I actually got this because the disc was in it. <laughs> Let's take a look at what I picked up. So I picked up that Wii game there, Epic Mickey, The Power of Two, and this was actually a really good find. It was 
you know, under $3 for a game that I've been looking for for a while. You know, I have the first one, and also, it's in really good shape. The disc is there, as well as the manual and everything. I just have to get those GameStop stickers off of it. And the other thing I picked up was this little Sony stereo. Now, the speakers that I grabbed ended up not working very well. I think they were blown, so I picked up some bookshelf speakers from Amazon. And also, shortly after I bought it, the cassette player stopped working, and that's because the belt snapped, which I knew was going to happen. Those belts are very old. I was able to order a really cheap replacement belt, and thankfully this thing is really easy to open up, and there's plenty of room inside to work on it. So once I get that belt replaced, this thing will be as good as new, but until that shows up, I can still listen to the radio on it, and also I've got a little FM broadcaster thing so I can plug it into things like an old CD player or... I have this little Raspberry Pi powered internet radio streaming thing that I can plug that FM broadcaster into and just use that to stream things over the radio and that actually works pretty good and it sounds pretty great so I'll, I'll leave you with what this neat little stereo sounds like. As always everyone, thanks for watching.